Our case studies on the automobile company Daimler Chrysler. The merger between Daimler Benz and Chrysler was considered one of the greatest industrial mergers in history because it cost a whopping 38 billion US dollars for the transaction to take place. Since Chrysler had a high proportion of market share in the car industry in America, Daimler Benz wanted to take advantage of this and decided to merge with Chrysler so it could enter the American market and gain more profit. Daimler announced its merger with Chrysler back in 1998. There were three main issues that plagued the Daimler and Chrysler team. One, they were putting together two car brands that had strong history and varying cultural backgrounds. Two, as there was no guidance as to how to go about having the merger, feasibility of the merger came into question. Finally, there were doubts if Daimler and Chrysler would be able to handle post-merger integration well and troubleshoot issues that would come along with it. One of the main issues that arose uh, was the disparity between the two corporate cultures at Chrysler and Mercedes-Benz. James Holden, who was then president of Chrysler, uh, described the situation as Mercedes-Benz being a brand revolving around luxury and class, whereas Chrysler was seen as a brand of blue-collar relations. Another issue was the apparent lack of trust between the two corporations. Some corporate executives at Daimler-Benz actually publicly denounced the quality of Chrysler vehicles. Another issue that was relevant was that both brand images were based off of two entirely different corporate identities. Chrysler followed or mirrored the American values of assertiveness and risk-taking, while Daimler-Benz focused on German engineering and quality. Furthermore, the element of brand bias seemed to be present within this merger. Mercedes-Benz dealers in Germany seemed to sideline or disregard the inflow or relevance of Chrysler vehicles as they did not want to devalue the Mercedes brand. Finally, one of the most important issues that was relevant in this case was the presence of management inconsistencies. Primarily speaking, uh, it's important to note that the CEO of Daimler Chrysler publicly disregarded the sentiment of the deal being a merger of equals at the time. He specifically mentioned that he used it to gain the trust and support of Chrysler as, and the American market as a whole, instead of actually implying the merger to be that of equal partnership. And as a result of the lack of cross-cultural coordination, Chrysler as a whole was on the receiving end of a relatively weakened executive workforce, having some of the top executives of the organization leave the company to work for other competitors, or simply leave as they feared for the future of their careers. The consequences of the conflicts faced doomed the merger of Daimler and Chrysler, with Chrysler taking the biggest hit due to the separation, to it losing its brand value and resulting in it being taken over by a private equity with an 80.1% stake in its shares. What was the most dismal of consequences was the 7.4 billion price tag given to Chrysler when it was sold off to end the merger. This was a stark contrast to the whopping 36 billion Daimler had originally paid to acquire Chrysler back in 1998. Now, we will look into the various cultural factors that are significant when considering the merger failure. It appears that Daimler-Benz and Chrysler exhibit major differences in the following factors. Organizational culture, company values, as well as communication styles. Firstly, we will consider the organizational cultures of the two companies, which we could compare using Hosteed's dimensions. As you can see, while Daimler had higher power distance, a more masculine outlook, higher uncertainty avoidance, and a more individualistic nature, Chrysler seemed to be diametrically conflicting with a lower power distance, a more feminine stance, lower uncertainty avoidance, and a more collectivistic nature. Thus, the German half of the merger favoured a very rigid top-down management and operational structure with a strict adherence to structure and corporate hierarchy. On the other hand, Chrysler, however, were more egalitarian with a focus on building human relationships with a strong risk-taking spirit in all their endeavours. Besides using Hosteed's dimensions, it is also important to consider the key difference in cultural values. While Daimler-Benz prides itself on reliability and quality at any cost, Chrysler's work centres around risk-taking and cost competitiveness. Daimler-Benz, having a high sense of formality and high emphasis on hierarchy, had meetings and decision-making processes restricted to senior managers. Chrysler, on the other hand, with their informal and egalitarian approach, had meetings that were open to participation by all employees, regardless of position or hierarchy. Thus, this created conflict and tension 
in the way Damlik Business meetings were carried out post-merger. As we can see, there is a vast lack of cultural fit between the two companies, contributing to the failure of the Damlik Chrysler integration. This is further influenced by the failure to consider intercultural differences during the pre-merger planning. Thus, it is this lack of dedication, time and effort being put into resolving inherent intercultural conflicts that ultimately led to the merger failure. Previously, we looked at what went wrong for the Daimler Chrysler merger and how it failed. Now we will be looking at how to salvage the situation and how exactly we can manage these consequences with better overall preparation. Our first step will be to acknowledge that there are differences within cross-cultural interactions. Now with our globalised world, there is this perception of decreasing cultural differences and indeed these differences are becoming more covert and harder to spot. However, it still remains at the heart of most conflicts and actually affects how most companies work together. Yet. Its imperceptibility causes companies not to prepare for it efficiently. Thus, preemptive measures need to be taken in order to ensure that these cross-cultural interactions do not affect the overall business. This can also lead the companies to decide better whether they are even able to cooperate and whether their cultures present a comfortable fit for each other. This leads to our next step, where they will prepare for working style disparity. After identifying key cultural differences elaborated on earlier, we will study Hofstadter's model and the cultural contact in relation to both Daimler-Benz and Chrysler. This will allow them to recognize their own style as compared to their counterparts and assess the differences. This would aid conflict management and show a respect for their partner. Managers on surgeons in their other culture can also be more prepared through these cross-cultural trainings with knowledge and skills that will reduce cultural shock and better adapt them. We then advocate the building of a new enterprise culture between Daimler and Chrysler. Since idea of blending cultures or creating new cultural territories is promoted here over the option of choosing one culture to adopt or alternating between cultures due to poor reception in this case where American work satisfaction fell after the dominance of German culture. This step of compromise allows for the combined advantages of both cultures to be tapped into and ensures both companies' values are maintained. But this means certain practices might have to be cut out. We can see that the consequences otherwise would be much more catastrophic. Lastly, before and during the merger, meetings should be hosted between managers of both companies to ensure a smooth cooperative team. This is supported by the contact hypothesis theory that effective intercultural communication can be facilitated through working towards a common goal. Daimler and Chrysler could have brought on for ways to set their course on the same directions while maintaining their individual values. Working for mutual benefit garners more respect and cooperation between the two enterprises. As such, these are the main repeated ideologies behind allowing for a more smooth transition into an eventual successful merger. It is also salient to note that effort must be made on both sides equally in maintaining the relationship. Our case study.